mama said, my, my, my mama said, what's up, fantasy people? This is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the Lucky Bastard Youth Enroll, coming at you live from the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Football and Show. Today's episode, we're going to go over the big night, man, which is Thursday night, upcoming Thursday, NFL draft. All these young kids are going to have their lives changed, Jason. They're going <laughs> to, you know, via money and brain damage, whatever. One of them's going to change their lives. Whatever comes first. <laughs> Hopefully, the money. Um, we're going to cover. The, we're going to cover the quarterbacks and the tight ends. Tomorrow, we're going to cover the um, skill positions, so the wide receivers and the running backs. So, as far as you know, like value in fantasy, you're not going to get much value out of rookie tight ends. I mean, Gronkowski, I drafted one year, Jason. I called it ten touchdowns. He got ten touchdowns. But other than that, that's. That's a real outlier is rookie rookie tight end success. But quarterbacks, there might be a couple quarterbacks you could that could get you by, you know, in in a pinch. You know, maybe a couple top 20 quarterbacks this, this season. So before we get into all of that, Jason, would you like to tell the people how they can help this show? Yeah, if you guys actually made it to this far in the video, you can help us out by giving us some some, some subscriptions. Hit the little button and subscribe. So you could give future updates, future videos on stuff that you may want to talk about or learn about. Uh, hit the like button. Get us out there. Get us out there. Push us out. And uh, give us some comments. We love the comments. We love the interaction, good or bad. We're here for it. Give us all your hate. Give it to us. All the hate. Hate magnet. Um. All right, Jason. So, first person. You saw what I just wrote down on the board. Who you got? Oh. He is the most pro-ready quarterback. He is smaller than your average. He's probably he's pretty much an, av an average human being. You know, he's the average male. He's like 5'10". <laughs> uh, he probably walks around like a 180, but when he drinks a lot of water, he can weigh over 200 pounds. <laughs> so, Jason, uh, <laughs> how do you feel about Bryce Young? I, I, he's my number one rated quarterback, and I, I get a lot of this off of, you know, what he did to Georgia, like in the championships. I'm basing a lot of my um, positioning off of what they did against Georgia, what they what, they, what they did against Alabama and other NFL qual, you know, caliber defenses. Yeah, I don't think you could really go wrong with Bryce Young as your number one. Um, by watching highlights, it's just so people know when I watch highlights, it's always the good, it's never the bad because I I can't put in bad highlights and find on YouTube. It's Oh, what wouldn't you do? Uh, that's why I like to watch him like versus Georgia or whatever. Like, yes, it's like, dude, you want to see a low light reel? Go watch Will Levis against Georgia. It's insane. Um, so the highlights that I saw, what I really noticed is, oh man, Bryce Young, he's going to be a good quarterback. Uh, one of the first things, like, he's an escape artist. You mentioned this multiple times in other videos, Tyler, that he feels like he has eyes in the back of his head. Right when you think you got him, he's gone. He's out of there. Um, but he also, he's very good at keeping composure in the pocket. You don't see him, you don't see him like even sweating it. Like he's just like, yeah, I'm here to play. I'm here to win. Let's do this thing. I could take a hit. Um, on, one of the most important things I saw too was his on the run accuracy. So when he is scrambling, when he's doing his escape artist skills, he's still throwing the ball while on the run and he's like hitting his targets. Um, he can make all the throws. He can make the deep ones. He can make the short ones. Why are you laughing, dude? On my way home, uh, Troy Aikman was on the radio, and he's like, "Why do people say they can make all the throws? If they couldn't make, what do you? What does that even mean? If that if they couldn't make all the throws, that would mean that they wouldn't even be an NFL. The NFL wouldn't be looking at them, you know? Oh, like, let's let me go. tell you, tell me the throws that they can't make is what he said. Uh, we could go ahead and make some, uh, some find some quarterbacks who can't make all the throws and who are still starting quarterbacks in this NFL. Um, That's true. One thing that one thing that I did see that he was really good at, and this is stuff that you already, like, you learn in the NFL, like, he was looking off the safety. You see him, like, draw back a few times, and he's looking to his left and waiting for that safety to go over, and bam, he's hitting the right. Um, and those were actually, those were my main ones that I got so far, or that I got from, like, watching the highlights. Um, you were talking about his size, Tyler. Um, I On NFL.com, his measurements were 5'10", 204 pounds. Um, but I don't think he... I don't think he uh, ran the 40 at the combine. Um, a question mark. There's some of these, some of these people, some of these players, these athletes chose not to run the 40, which is a lot of quarterbacks did not run the 40, which is not fun, but 
anyway, um, and to continue on, like his stats for last year, Tyler, he had 32 touchdowns, only five interceptions. Yep, saw that. 65%. He, yeah, he threw for 3,328 yards, and his uh, completion total was 64%. Uh, one of the games I looked at, I know you talk about like against Georgia, against Georgia. The game that I looked at was him against Auburn, where he went for 20 for 30. He threw for 343 yards, 66% completion. And he had three touchdowns and one interception, but he also had five rushes for 48 yards and one touchdown. Okay. So, yeah, dude, when you're looking at, other than he looks like a little kid out there, and then you start watching him. He moves in the pocket like um, a lot like a Burrow or a Brady. You know, he steps up in the pocket rather than, you know, getting flushed out or anything. He takes that first step up, which is huge, I think. And uh, you see his left tackle can miss a blocking assignment. And, like, right before, I don't know if he's got supersonic hearing or something, but eyes in the back of the head like Michael Vick, dude. If you're going to be somebody small that runs the ball, you need this skill. And uh, Bryce Young, dude, like, that kind of stood out to me. And yeah, anticipation of routes is like, was huge. Like relative to these other quarterbacks we're going to talk about, like his anticipation, he was throwing the ball before they broke out of their, you know, their cruel routes or whatever it is. And uh, so all you hear about him is decision-making, anticipation, you know, processing information. And he's got eyes in the back of his head. So that's all great, dude, for running quarterbacks. And especially if you're small, the one problem I had with him is he needs to slide, dude, and he does not look comfortable sliding. So, I don't know if you yeah. noticed that. No, you know, I, I don't see the bad in these highlights. They're all the good. But if you're a running quarterback, you definitely got to learn how to slide. We see what happens with running quarterbacks all the time. They get hit, they get injured, they yell out. And there's some time. Um, RG3. I didn't, I didn't even have my light on, Jason. Oh, hey. I've got a bunch of fluorescent lights and my big old window in this garage. So, I didn't even notice. So, yeah, uh, Bryce Young, Jason, do you want to talk about comparisons first? Because, I mean, I mean, literally, you pretty much covered everything, and it's all about his mind and his accuracy. And I do want to say he's not afraid. It's not like his receivers were getting a lot of separation. He was high-pointing. He was throwing to the right shoulder. So he is, like, NFL-ready right now. That's the yeah. thing. So it sounds like he was making all the throws. What? <laughs> So it's Troy, like, what is he, some Hall of Fame quarterback? You don't know. Oh, dude, I, I try to listen to him and Car Carson Palmer were making the rounds today. Um, um, okay, so who's your comparison, Tyler? Mine is uh, Joe Burrow. Like I said, I like how he moves up in the pocket and his anticipation <laughs> and his accuracy. So it was like, he's, I don't think he's going to be as good as Joe Burrow is. I mean, that's saying a lot. It's like saying somebody's Patrick Mahomes or something. But I mean, dude, give me like um, you know, like if if Joe Burrow's an A plus, he's gonna be like an A or A minus with a lot of great qualities. But Joe Burrow is, I don't know, six three, you know, two hundred something pounds, and he also runs a lot like this. So that Joe Burrow was my number one. That's what I thought of when I thought about all those things. My comparison that I had was Russell Wilson. Uh Russell Wilson's, you know, known for being an escape artist and he's accurate and he's he's great at the deep ball. Um and Russell Wilson was 5'11 and 204 pounds at the combine, and he ran the 40 and 4.53. Um, I see a lot of, and like you said, Tyler, Bryce Young likes to step up in the pocket. Russell Wilson likes to step up in the pocket. Um, and that was my comparison. And we've seen the type of careers that both players are already having in the league. So, yeah, so can't go wrong. I don't think he's like, you know, he's not a Joe Burrow caliber. And, you know, Patrick Mahomes, nobody believed in Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes when he was coming out. But as far as, like, you know, it's not like he's Andrew Luck coming out of college or something like that. And it's mostly because of his size. If he had the size to go with it, he would be up there with, you know, Andrew Luck and such. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got, some, we got like, seven teams at least that have um, – they may need, a, may need a quarterback in this draft. Texans, Colts, Panthers, Raiders, Commandeers, Falcons? Titans, um, but just to name some, who are you thinking that this guy might fall down to? He's not going to fall anywhere. He's going yeah. number one. Number uh, one to the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, and uh, there's been Will Levis uh, betting odds went like from like plus 5,000 to plus 2,000 to plus 550 today. So there is a lot of smoke, probably the Colts or something, but a lot of people are trying to get C.J. Stroud. 
or Bryce Young to fall. And there's no way I'm believing any of that, dude. All I believe is that, um, and it's consensus among coaches when they're polled or whatever, Bryce Young's going to go number one to the Panthers. All right. Next. Next, Jason. We are going to go over my number two quarterback. Is it weird that I'm sitting like this? <laughs> my number two quarterback, and the only reason that he's my number two quarterback, you know what? We'll we'll go we'll save that for my number three quarterback. CJ Stroud, Jason, Ohio State pumps out a bunch of quarterbacks that, you know, <laughs> have not done too hot in the NFL. I mean, Kyler Murray's kind of whatever, but CJ Stroud is bigger than Baker Mayfield. He seems bigger than Kyler Murray, and he seems to be a lot more mature than those those two as well. He he's my guy. CJ is my guy. Um, oh my gosh. When I was watching uh, CJ play or when I was just watching the highlights, it was a uh, a few tears to my eyes. Um, yeah, this guy and Bryce young, they're kind of like the, the top tiers and quarterback. So, you know, there's a good chance we're going to see this, these two players go one and two. Um, when I was watching CJ, like um, Tyler, he wasn't making all the throws. He was making tough throws. He made he was making some tough throws. Um now one another thing I saw was his accuracy. He, I felt like he was really accurate and just like Bryce Young, he was uh accurate on the run. And once again, that he was uh very composed in that pocket. Um you said this about Bryce Young, and I and I saw this and CJ that he was like timing with the wide receivers. I saw that. He was like even like leading wide receivers where it was just like wide receivers didn't have to slow down or anything. It was just it was like catching you know toilet paper, dude. It was just like ugh, catching it, bring it in. Um, I like how he sees the field, right? Like uh, pre snap and in the middle of the play, like he's seeing like what's open, what's uh, not open, and making the right throws when needed. And um. I put down, make every throw, and I feel like this guy is more of a pocket passer. He can scramble. He can when needed, but I think he's more of a pocket passer. Um, I think running's like the third option in his head. Yeah, I mean, and that didn't come to – I don't know if you watched the Georgia game, but, you know, he, he ran way more. I mean, that was the most he ever ran that whole season. So, mm-hmm. who knows what's going to be asked him at the next level, but he could be a running quarterback if they want him to. But, you know, I want my quarterback to be pocket first, run second, and that's what – both of those top two quarterbacks are Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. Um, yeah. And when you're saying make all the throws, Jason, my first thought to mind is like it just could be kind of can't, became a thing where people are like rolling out and then throwing across the field even deep. And mm-hmm. I watched C.J. Stroud do that. I mean, I wrote it down. And I was like, dude, he's he's great at throwing on the run, even across the field deep. You know, so I thought that was really good. And then um, I, I don't know he has a, was, oh, what's up? Sorry, I was like, I just feel like he has a beautiful ball it's, it's well yeah and the beautiful. big difference between him like i kept on hearing about is uh how he can throw with power or pace you know he's got a lot of touch mm-hmm. and like this you know there that's what different or differentiates himself from you know he's not he doesn't have like the pocket presence or quite like the you know the information processing that bryce young has and he does not have the eyes in the back of his head jason i did notice that he would get hit from behind if he stayed in the pocket too long or if he tried to roll out Whereas Bryce Young was still trying to make, was really still making things happen, even though that was going on. I uh, just wanted CJ to throw me a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, he had 41. I don't know if you didn't go over this, Jason. 41 touchdowns, six TDs. Or yeah. six, 41 touchdowns, six interceptions. So, yeah, his measurements at the combine are he's 6'3, 214 pounds. He didn't run the 40 time. That's from NFL.com. Uh, his 2002 22 stats from ESPN is that he had 3,688 passing yards, 41 touchdowns, six interceptions. His completion percentage was 66%. And Tyler, I did watch the Georgia game against Georgia. He was 23 for 34, 348 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions, six, uh, 67% completion rate. And he ran the ball 12 times for 34 yards. That dude was doing everything that he could to try to win that game. It was a great game to watch. Yeah. And you saw, and even that game, like he, the only problem I saw with his throws is he has a tendency to overthrows, you know, running backs coming out of the flat. Like he just made a crazy, you know, 50 yard bomb 
And then all of a sudden he's got this like, you know, running back in the flat and he throws it over his head. Um, but that could just be foot, you know, footwork or whatever. Um, but for the most part, he's got an amazing arm. Like you couldn't really ask for much more. My uh, comparison that I put down, are you ready for this? Oh, I thought you wanted me. Uh, oh, yeah, go for it. Let's do it. Um, Matt Ryan. And the reason why I said Matt Ryan's because when Matt Ryan came out of Boston College, like everyone just talked about how a beautiful throw he was, his accuracy and how he could just throw the ball. It was beautiful. And I remember watching him in the early years with um, a line of Falcons with Ronnie Wright and uh, Julio Jones. Like I, that guy was just making like, it was like a tight spiral every time. It was always just landing right in the bread basket for those wide receivers. Um, Matt Ryan at the NFL Combine, he was uh, 228 pounds and 6'4". Yeah, I'd say the biggest difference between the because I saw that I saw that comparison a lot, and it's um, yeah, like it, it's not like he's gonna it's not like Matt Ryan's gonna put you on his back and carry this franchise, but if you give him the right offensive coordinator, he could be an MVP, you know. So it's like I could see C.J. Shroud having like if he gets the right offensive coordinator, goes to the right uh, team, he could definitely be you know a Matt Ryan in the NFL, which was an MVP player with Kyle Shanahan. So. Yep. I do like that, Jason. And the biggest difference is that Matt Ryan runs about, you know, slower than maybe about as fast as you, Jason. Yeah. And that's pretty f- slow. <laughs> uh, well, your my... Oh, what'd you say? It was your comparison. Oh, Justin Herbs, man. So I, I, I really like Josh Allen. I was thinking that a lot just because all the, the way he st- stood straight up in the pocket and the way he delivered the ball reminded me a lot of Josh Allen and the way he ran in the Georgia game. But then, man, I was like, I, Justin Herbert has all the arm talent in the world. Justin Herbert's actually bigger. And Justin Herbert's might be a best, better runner, but at the same time, dude, like nobody knew that Justin Herbert could run the ball until his uh, championship game against whoever it was. Blew everybody's, you know, I was going to say the D word off, uh, socks <laughs> off. <laughs> and, um, dude, he went, he was a high riser and he should have went. I forget who he got drafted behind, but he was literally like the, what the number two quarterback in that draft or something like that. And we're looking at here. He's the number two quarterback in this draft, you know, saying he kind of broke out in the championship game the same way by running the ball. You kind of un- you understand his potential now. And I love Justin Herbert. So like Justin Herbert, he's not like a, like an obvious leader to me or like a, you know, a leader of men, super vocal. And I'm kind of getting this out of CJ Stroud as well. Whereas Bryce young, I just feel like he's a natural leader. And uh, my number three quarterback is a natural leader too, but, um, I'm not really getting that from CJ uh, Stroud, but that's not a terrible thing, dude. Justin Herbert, just lead by your play. And if you have the talent to do that, um, you don't have to be such a vocal leader. And CJ Stroud has that. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's go. Where do you think he's going to go? So the the Panthers got Bryce. Who's next? So I do believe there's going to be a trade, and he's going to be going number two or number three. I'm thinking, but at the same time, I'm not going to mock trades right now. Um, I'm going to say C.J. Stroud's going to them Colts, Jason. Colts are finally going to get themselves. A, hey, they're like, Matt Ryan, this guy, we, we could get this guy. Matt Ryan was great for us. We'll get him, too. Now, uh, <laughs> Speaking I do of this, Matt Ryan comparisons. Yeah. <laughs> he was uh, great for us. Let's yeah, get him. Did you guys see last uh, the last episode of that uh, the fantasy football show? They compared to Matt Ryan. We should draft him. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways yeah so number four latest to the colts interesting how do you feel about uh, that jason well you know I, mean, I i still think i still think the texans need to get themselves a quarterback so i know there's a lot of talk out there that they're content with their quarterback i don't i i hope they're they're not and they get this guy i really mm-hmm. i really want cj well, you know, my, my picks are a little bit different, but I really want uh, Texans to get one of these two running back or quarterbacks. Yeah, I'm not sure they will because they, they need to build that team and plus that defensive head coach, but we'll see. Um, we talked about this before on some shorts. Uh, who do you think will be in a better fantasy situation, Jason? Bryce Young with the Panthers or C.J. Stroud with the Colts? I think whoever goes to the uh, – oh, man. From what I've seen – Oh, that's tough, Tyler. That's a that's a good question. I think I have to go with the better offensive line. And who had the better offensive line, a better run game last year? I believe it was the Panthers. Yeah. Um, 
Plus, they have – I mean, I guess the Eagles offensive coordinator went to the um, Colts. Colts. Yeah. But I'm just thinking, like, they've got Michael Pittman Jr. and some other stuff. Like, mm-hmm. the Panthers just got rid of DJ Moore. Uh, that's tough, dude. If they, had, if they hadn't got a seat rid of CJ Moore, I'd, rather, I'd like Frank Reich with Bryce Young. But we're talking to NFL ready. I'm going to say Bryce Young has the better first year. Yeah, I think with the Panthers, you know, because they could, because they they could rely on that run game so much, they probably won't need to um, ask too much of whatever quarterback they draft. But you know, they did get Miles Sanders. They are heavy in the run game. The Colts, you know, they got the offensive coordinator Shane Steich, Steich from the Eagles. He's probably going to bring over that play style and you know Jonathan Taylor is one of the best backs in the league and they also got Michael Pippen who could be a number one if given the chance and yeah I like Michael Pippen you just have to throw him the ball over and over again he doesn't get much separation but he's still a really good wide receiver yeah all right right. number three I'm excited to know who this is Tyler dude this guy is, is a leader of men he would have been my number one quarterback Jason had he not uh done so bad against um not so bad but he just he got challenged against um georgia i think he might have had zero inter- zero touchdowns one interception and like 100 and something yards so that was not great but man watching this dude play against everybody peyton manning listen uh, listen i like to because uh, you know i was like oh hey hendon hooker i'm talking about my number three quarterback my number three quarterback uh peyton listen to peyton manning talk about this dude with his and, like, if you can take a program and elevate them, like, oh, you know, oh, this guy, Bryce Young, won at Alabama. Oh, my God. Can you believe it? C.J. Stroud won at Ohio State. Oh, man, that's the first. Dude, Tennessee has not been good since Vince Young. And here comes this dude. This guy's awesome, man. All right, Jason. Uh, Sorry, I just wanted to go over my rankings. I'm just really excited about this. No, what, no, no. what do you think about Hinton Hooker? Okay. No, I just I just want to go in there and say Vince Young played for Texas. Dang. You're right. Uh, it's, it's orange. Uh, Tennessee. Who was the last person? Paint Manny. <laughs> I'm. I think it was, dude. Yeah, was, it's uh, been that long. It's been a long. Time. Thank you for correcting me, Jason. Yeah, I, I get it. I get corrected all the time too. So, um, we got all these players and teams in our mind. They all kind of mush together. Um, uh, did you did you have anything else? I'll talk about him, but I I just wanted okay. to say like my reasoning because I wanted like preface it because this is like nobody has him as a number three. Right. Um, but I like Hendon Hooker. I like me some Hooker, you know. Um, from what I saw, dude, from what I saw when this guy was playing um, in the games, this guy, okay, I said this in the last, like, three quarterbacks, but this guy had composure. This guy just had like- confidence. He was so <laughs> – he would hike the ball, and, you know, people – you're kind of trained to like move your feet and kind of look around. This guy would come to a complete stop. And throw it to Hyatt, man. I was like, dude, this guy, he's got so much confidence. Like it, it doesn't even matter. He's like, dude, if I'm not going to jump around, I'm just going to lay here. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to wait for something to happen. I got time. I'm going to throw it. If I get hit, I get hit. I'll do the same thing next play. Um, what I saw too, that he was doing that. He was looking off some safeties a, a lot on the deep ball. He had a very accurate deep ball for one. I mean, he also had a guy, I want to say his name is like Jalen Hyatt. Um, he was a deep threat, you know, so he was throwing it pretty deep to him most of the time. And um, he was another one. He had a pretty, he had a pretty ball. When he threw the ball, it, it looked, it looked fancy. It looked pretty. I like the way that he, his mechanics have thrown the ball. Um, his measurements, Tyler, is 6'3", 217 pounds. And, you know, of course, this guy didn't, participate in a 40 yard dash because he tore his ACL in like October, November. So dude. And like what I saw, like when I, yeah, when I Googled it, it said he ran a four nine something. And I was like, uh, yeah, right, dude. He's like fast. Like if you watch the tape, it's not, that's not four nine. Yeah. He, um, so for his, before he got injured, he was having a pretty good year. He already threw for 3000 yards. 3,135 yards. He had 27 touchdowns. He only had two interceptions, Tyler, and his um, completion percentage, 69%. Woo! This guy was completing the ball. Um, you know, he did have some, like, tough games, but he, and then, you know, he got hurt. Um, the game I'm looking at here 
is against Florida. He was 22 for 28, 349 yards. He had two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Tyler, that's a 78% completion percentage. And if I'm seeing this right, I can't remember if I did this correctly, but he rushed the ball for 13 times, 112 yards, and a uh, touchdown. So two in the air, one on the ground. Hey, man. And it, he makes it look easy, Jason. Like, yes. And talk about accuracy, anticipation. Uh, I, I, you know, he does. He throws those rainbow balls. And I, the only yes. bad knock, yeah, the only knock I could really say is like on some of those, some of those deep balls, he zips in, and I really like it. But on some of those rainbow balls, when he goes deep, he'll underthrow. Like, but a lot of those cornerbacks in the um, college were playing the ball; they were kind of lost. And he had, he has, he had two really good wide receivers. So they were able to, you know, find, locate the ball and grab it, but that's not going to work in the NFL so much. So he needs to get some of those rainbow ball stuff down. Um, but dude, when he zips it, and he has touch as well, like he, he reminds me so much of CJ Stroud when he throws the ball. Uh, but I like him better running, and he's just kind of like a magician. Like you know, you think a play is breaking down, and you think like he's going to get sacked. All of a sudden, he just flings the ball out, and it's like, dude, there's a guy open running a slant somewhere else. And it's just because he stays in the pocket like so long. Man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but and he also, Jason, you know how I really I really like how Bryce Young steps up in the pocket. CJ Stroud's more of a uh, you know, horizontal guy. This is a step up in the pocket guy as well. So, like, if it wasn't for the injury and the poor performance against Georgia, I would literally have him as my number one quarterback. Uh because you know, he's got the size and a lot of the same qualities as the top two guys kind of blended. Yeah, so who'd you have uh, for your comparison? Well, Jason, <clears throat> where is my comparison for Hidden Hooker? Oh, Prime, because Prime Russell Wilson, because Prime <laughs> Russell Wilson would hang in the pocket and then just throw some rainbow balls out deep, and then you didn't realize this guy was super open, running down because he's off of the screen of the you know frame of the screen. What I'm trying to say, um, but he's tall. So it's like he's like a talented, a more talented Russell Wilson, man. I love Hendon Hooker and his decision making, just like, you know, Russell Wilson, a great decision making. We're talking prime Russell Wilson here. And uh, he could bring you back like out of anything. I could just see Hendon Hooker not being like, um, he does not look like you can put him down. Like even when he's down, like uh, against Georgia, he was down like seven to 20 something. Like I can't remember what it was. Like he keeps on coming back and his team plays hard for him. He looks like a leader. I don't know, dude. I really like him. He's because Russell Wilson's kind of a DB, you know, like he, nobody ever really liked him that much. This is like a cool, tall, prime Russell Wilson. Yeah, he is pretty cool. When he came to my birthday party, he brought some cake. That, um, was, a di- that was a different hooker, Jason. Oh, different hooker. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> that was me sliding down the pole. But the poles right. apparently made out of rubber. I don't know. Ooh. Um, my comparison is that I had him with Teddy Bridgewater, who's six two, two fourteen, 214, who also did not run a 40 at his combine. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I love Teddy Bridgewater mechanics. When he came out and was playing for Minnesota, I really enjoyed watching him play. Bridgewater looked like he had the confidence like this guy did in the pocket. There was a few times where Teddy Bridgewater would can go to a complete standstill and then just like beam it over. Um, and they both tore their ACL. So. That's me in heaven. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I understand that. Uh, w- when I was watching, I even told you when we played games that night, I was like, dude, Hinton Hooker reminds me so much of um, Teddy Bridgewater. It's just like the way he runs and th- everything kind of about him. But then, like, I don't know, the more I watched, I think he's I think he's actually better than Teddy Bridgewater. But I totally get it, dude. Like, those are the first two th- people to my mind. And then um, – Oh, and where do I think – you want to ask me where I think he's going to go in the draft? Yeah, list? so I don't know about you. I'd be very surprised if this guy goes in the first round, and that's just because of his injury, and he's already 25 years old. Um, but that being said, you may have a different uh, feel on it. Do you think he might go somewhere in the first round, and, and if so, to who? Yeah, um, I think the Seahawks at number five should pick him up, dude. Oh. Literally. But they also have the number 20 pick as well. I do not think he's going to make it past pick 20, Seahawks second pick. But I, I more than likely think that the Titans are going to draft this dude. I know they, they got Malik Willis last year, but 
this guy is so much like if you watch this guy's accuracy, I mean, everything I just said, man, about him, or we just said, he's a different player than Malik Willis with a lot of the with a lot of the same upside as far as rushing goes. So I think that they're going to bail on Malik Willis a little bit and and draft another quarterback. And Peter Schrager is the guy I like most usually as uh, far as NFL uh, mock drafts go. And I checked his, and he's got the same thing. Yeah, this guy totally seems like he will fit in the Pete Carroll offense. Dude, but uh, when we come back, all right, guys? <clears throat> so we went over our top quarterbacks. We've got Bryce Young at the top. We've got C.J. Stroud, number two. And now we have Hendon Hooker, number three. But like we said, I mean, this is just mine because, you know, Jason's got different rankings. But for the sake of the show, I'm hosting it. We're just going by my rankings. But like I said, dude, Hendon Hooker should have gone. He's a blend of the first two. And if, if he had no injury and he did better against Georgia, he'd be the number one quarterback. So don't forget about him. Go listen to Peyton Manning about him. Anyways, we're going to hit up the next uh, number four and number five quarterbacks. And then we're going to run through the top three tight ends when we come back. So should be one more episode. Stick with us, please. Are you okay? Are you okay? We back, people. We back. Going over the quarterbacks. Cutting no slack. So anyways. Get off my back. Went over the top three, or, you know, my top three quarterbacks. Jason, I didn't ask you this. Who do you have? Uh, do you have AR-15? Is he your number three? Yes. AR-15. Three AR-15. Yeah, I have him as my number three. So, Jason. Anthony Richardson, the buffest dude, man. Like ugh, since uh, that guy for the Jets, maybe like Golston or something. He was like, I don't know, showed up all jacked and got drafted as a defensive end in the first round and did terrible. Golston, cool. yeah, man. Yeah, hey, remember that? Oh. Um, so yeah, AR fifteen. He's like Tim Tebow two point oh. Let me know what you think about him. Okay, uh, watching this guy, he uh, he had the arm strength. He could definitely throw the ball a quarter mile at a time. And he was also, like, throwing it so high at his pro day that he was actually hitting, the like, some part of the roof at the, the facility that he was working out at. Um, He, like you said, Tyler, this dude looks strong. Strong. And he looks physical. He definitely looked physical. He's, he's going to be a tough cookie to break, right? Tough cookie to crumble, to tackle. Get down, because this guy wants the contact, Tyler. He wants the contact. Um, not really too impressed with a lot of his throws, though. Like, he did have some pretty good ones, but he was just like lasers, man. That guy was like, you catch that, dude, you're getting a hole in your chest. Like, you got shot by an AR-15, right? <laughs> um, his measurements, 6'4", 244 pounds. His 40 time was 4.43. His 10-yard split was 1.53. Um, this is where it kind of – it's not too impressive. His 2022 stats, he only threw for 2,549 yards, 17 touchdowns, nine interceptions. His completion percentage was 53%. Um, that's, not, that's not the greatest, but what I think what really helps him is that he's going he's gonna to be like a running quarterback but for how big he is and how physical he is, there's a good chance that he's going to make a living living at that goal line. Yeah, dude. Um, and do you you did you go over his percentage completed or his per completion percentage? Yeah, fifty. Uh, 50 what I have fifty three percent, pretty yeah. low. And so, like you know, the first thing that you can tell this guy looks huge. You, you watch him run, and he like drags three defenders, like even like defensive ends, like it's crazy. Um, so that's great. I mean, that's, uh, you know, and he's super fast and he throws the ball like, yeah, like it's when Randy Moss caught caught that one ball with a with one hand and then broke it. You know, like, that'll be every play, dude. There's every play broken hands all over the places. You know, he's explosive like those measurements you told me like, yeah, very explosive, but he needs to learn how to contain. You need to Sometimes you need to contain an explosive thing and he doesn't know how to do that, man. It just mm -hmm. poof, no walls, no nothing. No, uh, the first three quarterbacks we talked about can throw with you know touch this dude all the all this guy knows about touch is touching the damn ball yeah so, he's gonna throw the ball so hard if it hits your hand and breaks it that's your fault that's not his that's your fault 
Say, hey, man, I hit you in the knee. You need to catch that. I just hit so, yeah, with my 90 mile per hour fastball. You need to catch that. That's on you, not me. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you in the hands. I say that so much when I throw something to somebody and it bounces off their hands. It's like, sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to hit you in the hands. Yeah. <laughs> And that's like him, but dude, it's like he throws it so hard. He's like, take my strong every hand, you know, take your strong hand. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, what that's some of the, I mean, he, he avoids a lot of sacks because of his strength, Jason. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's big Ben esque. He gets hit and the people just kind of fall. Yeah. So, you know, he does not move in the pocket well at, at all. He's pretty much, if there's pressure coming, he just runs out of it. He doesn't know how to move up in the pocket, you know, like Hooker and Bryce Young. He's more of that lateral guy like CJ Stroud, but even like, but he's, he doesn't hang in there like CJ Stroud. And um, he's indecisive, which causes a lot of interceptions for him. So he's holding on to the ball, just kind of like, Oh, should I throw the ball? Should I throw it? And then he throws it and somebody else catches it, you know, on the other team. So, yeah. Yeah. I think he's like, uh, he, he's, he's a running quarterback who doesn't want to be a running quarterback. So he focuses on trying to throw the ball first, even though he already knows in his head uh, he's going to run the ball. So you sit there very unsure, like, uh, 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 it's like running throw. I don't know. But you're completely right. He's going to be hard to, like, bring down. He's going to have – he could go to a, a team that has struggles on the offensive line, and he could be the quarterback because he's going to be able to take a beating for a couple of years as they – whatever team he goes to, like, improves on offensive line he can have success you know but he's gonna mainly get his success on the ground and you watch him versus georgia and it looks like he's lost like how malik willis you know when he got the start it looks like he is like he doesn't know how to play quarterback it's almost like he's a super buff malik willis man so it's like it's very scary because he's got one year in college you know that's or as one year as producing as a starter um he, we for me to like want a quarterback that this I don't know dude it would scare you anymore I guess it would scare you even more if he was this bad in the second and third year so maybe that's what people are thinking about but when's the last time dude a guy has had it's like it was it's pretty much like the Trey Lance experiment like this guy has only you know started one one season and he killed it I do like Anthony Richardson in the right place Jason it has to be in the very specific place yeah and he cannot play immediately. Like he's gonna get it's gonna be Malik Willis, dude, out there. It's not it's not gonna be good. Um, one of the games I had his stats from was um against Tennessee. Um he was twenty four for forty four, but he threw for four hundred and fifty three yards. He had two touchdowns, one interception, but his completion percentage is fifty four percent. Uh honestly, if you're throwing the ball forty four times, I'm expecting you to have over a three hundred yard game. But he also ran the ball 17 times for 62 yards and two touchdowns. So, like I said, those two touchdowns, you're going you're gonna to get a lot of scoring opportunities with him at the goal line running the ball. Um, can I go in my comparison? Yeah, and I just want to say, like, as a Vikings fan, because I know the Cowboys don't, don't need a, um, a quarterback, but, like, I would be kind of disappointed if my if my team drafted a quarterback like Anthony Richardson in the first round. Yeah. yeah I think at draft day you might get some – some booze, some booze, but Who's your comp, uh, Jason. I can't. <laughs> uh, my comp is uh, Cam Newton. Cam Newton definitely had a better uh college year, college career. I think his final season he threw for like 30 touchdowns or rent or some more, but Cam Newton still came out of college. Um, struggling with some accuracy, you know, short throw, uh, mid throws, deep balls. That's Anthony Richards, um, Richardson, Cam Newton, uh, six five. This is at the at the combine when he was in the combine. He's six five, two hundred and forty eight pounds. He ran the forty and four point six. Um, so Anthony Richards is faster. That's crazy. His ten yard split was one point six. So he's a you know he's an inch. And you know what, Cam Newton also he's he's also throwing those lasers, man. He was throwing those lasers to Steve Smith and Greg Olson. He just like he doesn't layer throws, you know. He just yeah, it's like yeah, frozen rope, dude, frozen rope. And I was watching this guy's highlight, and I was like, man, that is Cam Newton right there. Um, and that's my comparison. And we see what Cam Newton's done in the NFL, right? He had an MVP season. He went to uh, the Super Bowl. So 
if you right system, right, right system, right team, you can eventually do pretty well. Yeah, and uh, my comparison, Jason, six foot two, two hundred forty pounds, but he had four years of Syracuse, went to a perfect situation with Andy Reid and the Eagles. But let's just say you took Donovan McNabb after his first, you know, year as a starter in college and put him in and said, hey, man, this huge, thick dude who likes to run the ball with a cannon of an arm, you know, like wants to, uh, you know, be a quarterback or whatever. If if McNabb would have came out these days, like, you know, he probably would have been, you know, it's OK to get a raw quarterback these days. It's not all polished like it had to be back in the day. People are more willing to take risks. That's why Anthony Richardson is here. If he was back with McNabb, he would have been like, you know, third round or something. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. Just watching him and thinking about how McNabb went to the perfect situation. And uh, I was just looking for like, just like thick quarterbacks, man, that are kind of like, like to run and, uh, but not all run and that are hard to take down. And I remember Donovan McNabb being so awesome. And, um, you know, his best season was like 31 touchdowns, eight interceptions you know, 650 rushing yards. So, like, if, say, he went to an Andy Reid type of team and we got in the perfect situation, I can see something like that happening. But it's got to be so specific, Jason. Like, like Andy Reid and the Eagles, it's like, it's very, 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 it's going to be very difficult for him to succeed in the NFL. Yeah, look what happened to Dominic, Dominic McNabb when he went to the other teams. Um, you know, he got drafted, went to, by the Eagles. Andy Reid was the coach. Uh, what Brian Westbrook was the running back. He had a good yeah. defense on the other side with yeah. Brian Hawkins in the safety. And then they go out and got Terrell Owens. And that was like one of his prime years in Terrell Owens. Like that's the year they went to the Super Bowl, lost to the Patriots. So yeah, you're absolutely right with him. It's, it's going to be Ray Lambs. It's going to be Ray Lambs. But, you know, but I think um, McNabb even won a championship at Syracuse, but he was there for four years. And just think about how rough or bad he was after his first year there coming out into the, you know, hey, I'm going to play NFL. That's what I'm comparing him it to. It's not like fully polished Donovan McNabb. It's like a raw Donovan McNabb. I hated McNabb. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah, because you're a Cowboys fan. I was like, why, Jason? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Jason, you want to know where I think he's going? Yeah. So what do we got now? We had the Texans picking. We had the Seahawks. Uh, no. Draft quarterback and the Colts, right? Oh yeah. Um, so who's I, I said the Seahawks. I, I said the Seahawks should draft in and Hooker, but I said Hinton Hooker is probably going to go to number eleven at the Titans. So okay. we still have Houston. We still have the. Uh, we have Colts taking the uh, CJ Shad, and we have Seahawks at number five. That's where I think he should go and where he will go. Because uh, one thing oh. that I keep on hearing about Pete Carroll is, you know, he doesn't care. He give him a physical specimen, something, some kind of outlier. And he'll make it work. So talk about outliers, Jason. This is like an outlier of outliers. They already have, you know, a, a really Geno Smith who, man, that system really fits a running quarterback type of thing. Um, but he needs to take this whole year and learn how to throw the damn ball. Yeah, I think that could be a good setup for him, you know, under Pete Carroll. Geno Smith, he had a good year last year. He got paid. So this dude is going to be the starter for this year. Um, that could be a good setup for him, you know, get uh, a year or two behind Geno Smith and then come back as a starter whenever Geno Smith starts to wear down and they get rid of him. It, it's kind of funny, though. Ah, man, it's hard, it's hard for me to see him as a, as a Seahawk. I see more of a hooker being a Seahawk than Richardson. Oh. Hendon Hooker, not a hooker. Oh. Hooker, hooker would be – he'd be challenging for the starting position. Yeah. Um, okay. Ready to go to the next one? So, my least favorite person in the NFL, or in this whole process so far, Jason. Yeah. Coming up. So, mm-mm-mm. my number five ranked quarterback. Will Levis, dude. Um, Like, Anthony Richardson did terrible against Georgia as well, but he moved the ball, man. Like, he, he was running through fools. I, you watch Will Levis. Go watch that that game. You might as well have dude it doesn't matter some terrible person some bum off the street and then you throw in like you see all the, like, the selfies he takes of himself and all this like he it seems like he has zero self-awareness he's very confident in his looks i'd rather have him be confident in his nfl in, in his football play um 
I don't think dude, I've seen some mock drafts about the Vikings picking up Will Levis, and I'm like, oh my god, dude, that would be the I, that would just that would kill me. I hate Will Levis. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Jason, what do you think? I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> well, he's definitely the least talented out of the out of the five that we're going to talk about. Um, you know, from being from Kentucky, there's really only three things I saw that stood out when I watched his highlights. One was the arm strength. Yeah, that dude could throw the ball. Um, he's a strong runner. You know, he was kind of like an Anthony Richards. He would like he's looking for contact and he's hard to bring down. So you know he's going to be around the goal line getting some uh goal line carries, some touchdowns, and uh, he had a quick release. I feel like he was pretty like he had a quick release. I tell you what, when I go back, um, we're, we'll do the comparisons later. But yeah, it was just really those three things I really saw. Um, the one thing that I was really frustrated with, um. Will is that part of the reason why I said that he had arm strength is because this dude was always walking backwards and then just like lobbing it up. He would, <laughs> and, and like you know he would he would overthrow or make it to the guy, but he was Tyler. You you talk about you're sitting there, you're like step up, step up, step up. This guy is stepping back, stepping back, stepping back. Um, you know, it could be also the offensive the offensive line was all that great in Kentucky, but. You don't want to see your quarterback keep, you know, moonwalking backwards, man. You want to see him two step forward and launch that ball. And he looks like he literally, he doesn't look like he knows what he's throwing to. Like he does not see people out there. He'll just throw right into double coverage, like the easiest interceptions, man. It's crazy. So like all I've heard was, oh yeah, when he had a, a great supporting cast because everybody is going off his tape last year, and it's like, dude, yeah, that's great, man. But like now people had tape on him, and I guess his team got worse. Some, anyways, dude, I don't care. I would want you to improve off your freshman year or whatever it is, whatever it was, your first year starting. Um, I would just don't want excuses, especially if you look that bad, like so bad, man, just so bad. I, I didn't even write much about him. He did have a quick release and he's quick to throw. Yeah. But yeah, dude, he throws in double coverage, could not move the ball, you know, and he can throw the, he, he will throw the ball. He still underthrows some balls, like deep balls too. Like he's got the arm for it, but he still underthrows it. I just hate him, dude. I just <laughs> and I saw the pictures he was taking of himself. I'm like, this guy seems like such a douche. Yeah. Um, all right, his measurements at the NFL combine. He was 6'4, 229 yards or 29 pounds. He uh did not participate in the 40 time. So let's go to his uh 2002 stats. He only threw for 2,406 yards. 19 touchdowns, but 10 interceptions. That's more than Anthony. But he was 65% uh, completion percentage. Um, you know, Kentucky doesn't really play. Like Miami of Ohio. Yeah, like the team. <laughs> that's why you say that, because the team that I had him, the the game that I had him uh, play against the stats for is Youngstown State. Youngstown State. If you get too old, they kick you out. <laughs> um, 20. 27 for 35, 377 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, but he also had a rushing touchdown. So that's a pretty weak conference. Um, I I can't believe there's not another quarterback out there that could be replaced as a top five with this guy only doing 2,500 yards and 19 touchdowns on 10 interceptions. Yeah, dude, so dude. what's his comp, Jason? Coming out of college, this guy reminded me a lot of Mr. Josh Allen, who struggled with a lot of this stuff, but also, you know, we see this like tall guy, power guy running the ball around the goal line. I was like, is that Will? Is that Josh? They look identical. Um, Josh went to the uh, combine. He was 6'4, 237 pounds, and he ran the 40 and 4.76. You know, I see a lot of the stuff that um, Josh Allen struggled with in college, but he did have the quick release. He did. Um, he was a strong runner, and he also had the arm strength. And another reason why Buffalo drafted him is because he, he's used to the cold, right? I don't know how cold it gets in Kentucky, but I don't think they're going to be able to use that for Will. So that was my comparison. Mine, Jason, is a uh, an uglier Daniel Jones. So no, he's a buff. He's a buff Daniel Jones. But dude, Daniel Jones is this like supreme athlete. I mean, he was a basketball player. Look at that full run. He had like the fastest. Uh, the fastest run speed in the NFL for a long time last season, and maybe it was a season before. And it, we're not talking like rookie year Daniel Jones, who did okay. We're talking like 
year three Daniel Jones, who like they were going to throw out the building, like terrible decisions, but a great, you know, tall athlete. You can make, you can throw the ball really well. It's just, dude, terrible decisions, like no confidence and just wants to run the ball. I don't know, man. Like that's, and he also like has the brain. He's like Daniel Jones. I like as a person. It's like, uh, he's got, he's Daniel Jones with Jay Cutler's brain, man. Like <laughs> no self-awareness. Like, Oh, I, like I'm the greatest. I might be the best player in the NFL. You know, it's uh, looking around the Kentucky locker room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, dude. Um, if I had to compare him to somebody, Daniel Jones, Jay Cutler's brain, nothing I right. want. Okay. So where's he going? Oh yeah. So Jason, um, where do I have him going? Oh, the Texans have a number 12 pick. So I think that they're looking at, uh, cause where's my other, uh, what is that the furthest down quarterback that I have? Cause it's kind of scaring me. Cause yeah. Cause I have Hinton hooker and I've got Anthony Richardson. Yeah. So he's the last of the quarterbacks taken, but it's still, you know, first round NFL draft. Everybody has to pick a damn quarterback and Houston might just, you know, they've got two first round picks. So it'll be kind of like a throwaway pick, maybe developmental or whatever. He might take the job from um, CJ or you know Davis Mills, but I would like Davis Mills to have one more chance. He had a great rookie year. Um, and as far as fantasy goes, Jason, I would I want no part of Will Levis in Houston or yeah in Houston. Okay, I got a question for you. Maybe you might know this. When the Buffalo Bills drafted uh, Josh Allen, who was their coach? Was it was it uh it wasn't Sean McDermott, huh? No, I'm wondering if it oh, was. Huh? I think it was. I want to say it was Sean McDermott. Okay. Quarterback. And, Brian or... Dayball was the offensive coordinator, and he was the one that developed. Yeah, because Brian Dayball came in with Sean McDermott and developed Josh Allen. All right. with a So that's a defensive coach. Mike, uh, Mike, Brian Mike... Dayball is a brilliant freaking we, – we discovered how brilliant Brian Dayball is offensively, though. Maybe the offensive coordinator for the Texans just need another Josh Allen to work his magic on. My whole point was that uh, – D'Amico Ryan, definitely a defensive coach. And you're saying that there's a chance they may go, um, Will might go to them in the 12th pick. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me, you know? Yeah. I, um, at least they got a quarterback that they could work on, right? If they, I, if, I, I think they Will, take, yeah. if they're getting Will, they get, they're going to have to be like, all right, we got to give this guy three, four years. But, you know, I, if, but if I was, um, like I said, if I was Houston, I would take, I would take in and hooker or probably CJ Stroud, but they're, but I totally understand their thinking. They're probably going to be in a top five next year too. So why even bother? Cause like it's, you want to take the risk on your, you, like you feel like you must take a quarterback when you're the type of team that's not going to see the top five again, Houston's going to see the top five again, regardless who they take. Yeah. Um, you know, all right, Jason. Ryan. Yeah. So we're going to get into tight ends now. We're going to go over two tight ends kind of in depth. And then Jason and I kind of both have some flyers Um, to, you know, we're seeing like probably three tight ends in the first round. Some people have Jason. Some people have mine as a third, but two are locked. Jason, the number one tight end, Michael Myers. Yeah, baby. (laughs) You you go, (laughs) you go awesome powers. I go. Uh, that's isn't that Jason or that is Michael Myers? Michael Myers. Oh, that's right because of that one movie. Uh, they had Michael Myers. Go get Michael Myers mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What movie was that? Gone and oh, Baby Driver. Baby Driver. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay, Michael Mayer of Notre Dame. Um, this guy was a fun watch. He was. It's great to see a tight end able to produce as much as this guy did, and just like look great at just about everything that he did on the field. Uh, when I was watching him, first thing I noticed, big body. This guy was a big body. That big boy body. thick, thick. Damn boy, that boy thick. Yeah, and for that size and being a big body, this guy was running uh, wide receiver routes as a tight end, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's what you want. Route running is the key. That looked awesome. Um, and what another thing that I really love about this wide receiver is that he reached out to catch the ball. He reached out to catch it. He's not having it using his chest as a backboard, right? This ain't basketball. This is Notre Dame football. Go Irish. Not really. I, Notre Shame. I hate it. Notre Dame. Oh. Um, he reaches out to catch the ball, right? And then he also, when he would get the ball, you see a little shimmy. He does little shimmies. 
He's running. He catches it, turns around. He goes, oh, mm. oh. I'm like, man, this big body boy running routes like a wide receiver and doing some shimmies like a running back. This guy, he's super athletic for his size. Um, once again, I want to put down, he had, he had good hands. He was able to catch a lot of, a lot of throws towards him. He was reaching out, grabbing them, or a lot of concentration. Um, he's strong. You can see he, like, he was hard to bring down like a Gronkowski. And he also was able to box out people in the red zone. I see when there was um, to be like a little pass to the red zone, like from 10 yards out, and that dude would just turn around, box the dude out, and like catch it. Um, this guy is going to be fun to watch in the NFL. Yeah, and for his size, Jason, I mean, six four and a half. So he's not a freak. He's not some, you know, physical freak. But, man, uh, he lines up. They'll line him up as a wide receiver. They'll line him up in the backfield. They'll line him up literally everywhere. When he's in the backfield, he's mostly just blocking. Um, and this dude can block, man. Like, he doesn't care. He'll block defensive tackles, man. It doesn't matter. Uh, and he finishes his blocks. You know, he, like, drives people down to the ground. So I think he really likes to block, you know, like a George Kittle or whatever. And uh, what you said about his route running really stood out to me because, like, he gets no separation, dude. And if he ever does get separation, it's like because he has some really good footwork at the end of a route, you know, like where he comes back around real fast. But he's got that spectacular catch icon, Jason, under his player name. So if you just hold X, that fool, like, reaches up and grabs it and brings it down every time. So yes. that is the thing that I like to see in tight ends is a spectacular catch icon, and he checks that box. Yep. Um, his measurements, you said already, 6'4", uh, 249. He ran the 40, 4.7, and his vertical was 32.5 inches. Um, his 2022 stats was 65 receptions for 809 yards with nine touchdowns, and he averaged 12.1 yards per catch. Uh, part of the reason why I hate this dude is because, <laughs> gosh, oh, uh, there's like two games like this is like just very frustrating. Um, I had him watch him last year, beat up my USC team. He had eight receptions, 92 yards, and two touchdowns, and he averaged 12 yards per catch in that one, too. Yeah, I think USC probably had the worst tight end defense in the country last season. Um, <laughs> and you're calling you're calling out the stats. I do want to say one of the most important stats to me for tight ends in college is targets per game. Cause I mean, dude, if you're a really good tight end, you're going to be like the focal point of that offense. And he led the, he led the the league or, you know, call He led college with 8.8 .8 targets per game. That was number one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I will, I will love for my future NFL tight end for fantasy football reasons to get eight targets a game. That'd be great. Right. Jason, what is his comp? I really liked your comp. I wanted to steal it. Really? I didn't think you really liked my comp. Well, I thought about it for a long time, and I was like, yeah. I mean, as other than blocking, like, you're right about a lot of it. Yeah, so and my size, comp. And size. My comp was Tony Gonzalez in his prime. Because Tony Gonzalez was a freak of nature, and that guy was doing the same thing, Tyler. He had the spectacular catch icon. He was running rounds like a right receiver. He was quick. He was boxing people out. Tony Gonzalez was a uh, college basketball player. Um, when Tyler Thigpen was throwing uh, Tony Gonzalez the ball like on every other play. It was just, it was art to watch. And I was like, this is what um, Michael Mayer looks like because he, every time I was watching it, I'm seeing the ball <laughs> go to him. That, Dude, Tyler, uh, what was his name? Tyler Thigpen? Tyler Two, Thigpen. I, I, had, I think I got both of them that year. I, I swear to God, dude. I think I went to the championship with that combo. Yeah. They, they killed it. And it was like the same situation, right? Like they had no one else to throw the ball to. So yeah. He, you got you throw it to your big tight end, and you know Tony Gonzalez. He's a future Hall of Famer. He all these uh, things that I notice about Michael Myers. He's the same thing. And um, at Tony Gonzalez's combine, he was six four, two hundred and forty four pounds. His forty time was four point eight three, and his vertical was thirty three point five inches. Cool. So Jason, like I said, that's a good comp. Um, I do think that Tony Gonzalez is like longer. But as far as just like kind of like, you know, not getting much separation and just catching everything, I do like that comp. Um, my comp, I wish I could use Gronk, but Gronk is like huge. Like he is so much bigger because, you know, Michael May Mayer ran a 4.7. Gronk ran a 4.7, 4.68. But Gronk is 20 pounds heavier and like, you know, almost three inches taller. So it's like 
kind of got different vibes, but just by blocking wise and, and spectacular catch wise, I with zero separation, I really wanted to say Gronk. Um, but Gronk just holds such a special place. I'm I'm gonna say even a, a better Jason Witten, Jason, because um the route running with zero separation and just catching everything, just being a vacuum, you know, like I felt like uh whenever I watched um what's his name? Oh yeah, Jason Witten, he he's not like the best, you know, physical freak. He also he ran a four six five forty, which was even faster than Michael Mayer. So I'm giving him more I'm giving Michael Mayer more athletic credit than I should. Um, but I don't know, dude. I just I think that he looks like a Jason Witten to me. Uh, but like a blend between him and Gronkowski. I think he's I think because Jason Witten was an amazing blocker too, correct? Yeah. Jason Witten was also a amazing route runner which i think this guy is gonna have yeah i just think this guy's better at catching the ball like i think like jason witten like he's a vacuum but he's not like that spectacular catch guy yeah jason Witten, he was a guy that i was like man i feel like i could go out there and run as fast as him but his route running as a tight end figuring out zones and man to man you know i think him and tony rome were the ones that invented the the y route yeah Um, so jason we got 10 minutes left but we're gonna get through this all right uh, I do want to say where he's going to go. And I, okay, what's up? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to do that before what I was looking at NFL teams that may need a tight end, uh, Bengals, Packers, and possibly Cowboys. Where do you have him in this draft? You missed one, Jason. You missed it. Um, so I don't think the Chargers, I think they let Gerald Everett go or something like that. I can't remember what it was. But, you know, Gerald Everett's not a long term solution there with the young Justin Herbert. I've got him going number 21 because they know – because I, all I saw was the Cowboys. Dude, if you look at anything Cowboys, they want this guy so bad. So they want to get him before the Cowboys. The Cowboys have to trade up if they want him, which I don't think they will because they still need a running back. So, yeah. yeah. I think he's going to go – and this is a rare situation, Jason. This guy is pretty NFL ready because of his blocking. He could go here and produce this this year. So – I'm going to call this, if he goes to the Chargers, I'm going to say you should probably pick up Michael Mayers in fantasy, and that is very rare that you could do that with a, with a you know, rookie. Yeah, draft him. All right, who's who's your uh, number two, Tyler? I had him as number one, but then I was just like, as, this guy is such a bad blocker. It's just so hard. So, um, Kincaid, Jason. Dalton Kincaid from Utah. When I was watching this guy, he was great at making contested catches. Um, he was another type of tight end that he reached out to catch the ball. Um, and he, he was able to find open spots in the zone. I saw a lot in the USC game. I'm like, this guy is open every time they throw him the ball. So he was able, he's very good at finding uh, the open spots. Um, and he's got nice, like, movement after the catch, right? He seems like he's a little bit – he's got a little bit of agility on the run. Uh, his measurements, 6'4", 246 pounds. He didn't run a 40 um just let me do the stats real quick in 2022 his stats were 890 yards seven uh touchdowns on 70 receptions he does look good so and also this is what i was talking about too where i was like man usc just got destroyed at the tight end because i remember watching this guy and i was like dude this guy is just having a great game and we can't stop him i was like i'm going to use that game as um what i'm going to discuss on the show so when I look at the stats against USC, 16 receptions, 234 yards, and one touchdown. And he averaged on, on 16 targets, Jason. On 16 targets. So he was 100%, and he averaged 14.6 yards a catch. Oh, that, that's like to see that out of a tight end. Like, so both of these two top tight ends, they have the whole, you know, Hoover vacuum type of, you know, description. Like they, Anything that's close to him, they just have a natural ability to just kind of keep it close and hold on to the ball. But they also have what Jason was talking about. They go out and reach out, catch with their hands, spectacular catch icon under their feet. So I think the icon is even two hands in Madden, like 2007 yeah. or something like that. Well, oh. So and what I noticed about him, Jason, was as soon as he catches the ball, that fool turns upfield and runs so fast. And that reminds me so much of George Kittle, but... Then I went back to Kittle, and you can't compare this dude to Kittle. Like, the one thing that you compare to Kittle is how he – you know when you see Kittle catch the ball and he just runs straight upfield? That's what this guy does. Yeah, that's what I was talking about where he, he catches the ball and he has great movement. You know, he's going to get some yards after the catch with this guy. Yeah, and he lines up just like Michael Mayer. He lines up everywhere. 
Um, but he's like Michael Myers mini me because this fool is like he's six four. I mean, he's probably built like dude, you know, six four two fifteen or something. I can't remember what he was. Was it two forty? No, they gave him like two forty, but he does not six, look like it. He was six at the NFL Combine. He was six four two forty six. Yeah, and that's like the same size as Michael Mayer, but they look like two different human beings, like because they are, but two different builds. One's definitely and, uh chicken wings, and the other one is muscle. Um. So Kincaid, dude, he's a willing blocker, but he like will bounce off of a defensive tackle. He'll he literally bounces off of people like, Hoo-ah! and then he just bounces off. It's crazy. I yeah. was like, I wrote that down because I was like, man, this guy's blocking. Michael Mayer's like blocking uh, edge rushers and stuff, and then this fool like runs up the middle and literally f- freaking goes backward. It's crazy. <laughs> so yeah. that's the chicken wing guy. So that's what like because I was like, man, I was so in love with this guy's tape, but. Jason, um, what else? Oh, yeah. Who is your comp for this dude? So I'm looking at him, and I'm seeing a young, young Zach Ertz. This guy, I, Zach Ertz, was kind of the same way when he was younger. You know, when he had the mobility, he was able to get the ball and turn up field a little bit. And, you know, he's able to – Zach Ertz was very popular reaching out to catch the, teach, uh, catch the ball. Um, even, I, I think, kind of the body type, too. Uh, Zach Ertz, he's 6'5", so he's an inch taller, but – 249 pounds. His 40 time was 4.67. And Zach Ertz's uh, vertical was three point or 30.5 inches. One of us wrote it down wrong. It was four. I got 4.76 for that 40 time. What did I put? Matter. You said 6.7. No, no, no. You're right. Yeah, sorry. I just mixed them up. 4.76. So, yeah. Very similar. And, and if you read the draft profile of Ertz, it's like uh, he needs to work on his blocking. And then it's like, dude. There's so many stuff about Zach Ertz blocking and not being able to block. But Jason, I do want to tell you Zach Ertz's best season, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 1,100, so 1,163 yards, 116 receptions, and eight touchdowns. So Zach Ertz is literally like a Jason Kelsey. Like in his prime, Zach Ertz was like, just Jason Kelsey does this every year. Travis, Travis Kelsey. Sorry. I keep on, I always say Jason. Um, but man, it's like, if Zach Ertz just would have stayed healthy longer, longer, we mm-hmm. would be talking about him differently. Yeah, he definitely. I think I actually had him on my on my team that year that he just blew up and got that many receptions. Yeah, so, yeah, so Kincaid's great. Um, Jason, I do think that he's going to be the first tight end off the board. Okay, so he's going before Mayor. So where's he going then? The come on the Commanders because of uh, Eric Bieniemy. And you know, dude, like what, like Lo- the to- uh, Logan, whatever. I can't remember Thompson. Yeah, like Logan Thompson. All these tight ends that they usually have are usually more the athletic, non-blocking type. Mm-hmm. So this kind of fits with the Commanders' history and Eric Bieniemy being the new offensive coordinator. They already have the wide receivers and the running backs. Let's give them a tight end. All right. Yeah, that could go well. Look what Eric Bieniemy did with Travis Kelsey. So, all right, Jason, you got thirty seconds to talk about that tight end. What? Who is it? It was Luke Musgrave from Oregon State. Um, not 100% sure why this guy is even on there, but he uh, he works the middle, you know, and he does a lot of rollout plays, and I put that he's tall because this guy is 6'6", six, six, and he's 253 pounds. His 40 time was 4.61. His vertical was 36 inches, and I really didn't put down any stats because when I looked it up, it looked like he only had 19 receptions this last year. So you think he's a like a late like a second round? He's he should not be in the first round. No, I don't think so. Okay, and then the the dude that I saw, um, God dang it, where do I have this? I had all my stuff. Oh, right here, Darnell Washington. This guy looks like the biggest dude, like on the police academy. You know, like two tie two tall Jones. Like who the hell is this guy? Uh, six foot seven, two hundred seventy pounds. He ran a four six four, Jason. So, but. He is fast, but when you watch him play, he doesn't seem that athletic. I was, I wanted to give him a Gronk. I wrote down Gronk, and then the more I watched him play, I was like, dude, this guy is so stiff. <laughs> uh, I can't call him Gronk. So I went through and, like, who are the other huge, amazing block? This guy literally could be a tackle that catches a ball. Who else could do that in the tight end? Mercedes Lewis, man. If you remember Mercedes Lewis, he was 6'6, 270 coming out, and he was a t- even a top blocker. He's like 38 years old. He always has a job. So I do see Darnell Washington. For real life football, being a really good tight end, but not fantasy. He's not going to be catching passes. Yeah, Mercedes Lewis. I think he only had like one year, maybe two, where he was actually fantasy relevance when he played for Jacksonville. But great block. 
that's what I see here. It's like, you know, depending on where he goes, he might be pretty good. You know, if he gets some Hall of Fame quarterback or something like that, but more than likely, but he's going to have a great career. This guy is freaking huge, man. Like, just you should, if you watch the show, just go Darnell Washington, man. This guy is, it's a All joke. Right. I think we need to call it. All right. So we have like 40 seconds left. Thank you so much for watching this show. We're going to come back tomorrow, hit the skill positions, wide receivers, running backs. Running backs are, are very important rookie uh, rookie seasons. Wide receivers are becoming more important. So depending on where they go, they can really you're going to want to draft all these fools tomorrow. Yep. So, anyways, catch you on the flip side. Peace.